Hello, my dear friends. I'm Andrew Harvey, and I am beyond thrilled and honored to be able to invite you to take what I believe will be one of the greatest pilgrimages of your life to Ladakh next year in June. It's very difficult for me to speak about Ladakh because Ladakh has played such a monumental and profound role in my own awakening. I first went to Ladakh at the end of my 20s. I was one of the very few people who had actually come into Ladakh because it had only been opened two or three years before I went. And when I went to Ladakh and began to begin to experience the secrecy and mystery and majesty that radiates from every stone, every mountain, every field, every monastery of that holy place, I found myself undergoing the beginnings of a very profound change because I met the, the humblest, sweetest, kindest people I had ever met. I never imagined that there would be people so humble and gentle, free of any kind of violence that I could see. And I met there also a man called Tukse Rinpoche, who was, it now turns out, coming towards the end of his life, and who I experienced as a living Buddha in such a way that I became his disciple and opened my whole life to the truths and the brilliance and the radiance of Tibetan Buddhism. The book that I then wrote was my first prose book. It was called Journey in Ladakh. And I shall never forget the process of writing it, which I did in a small room in my college in Oxford, surrounded by light, surrounded by the grace that Tuxi Rinpoche had poured on my head. It was my first experience of truly trying, as far as words can convey, to convey the depth of mystical truth. And the experience of writing the book not only changed my life, but changed my sense of what my mission would be, which would be in the years that followed to attempt to convey the depths of the mystical truths of all of the great traditions in such a way that people could be illumined and inspired by them. So inviting you to come with me 40 years later to this great sacred world fills me with joy. And I can promise you four things. I can promise you that you will be overwhelmed by the majesty of the place itself, this high Himalayan kingdom in which Tibetan Buddhism still survives in a pristine form despite the inevitable modernizations that have happened. I can promise you that you will experience something of what I first experienced, the utter sacredness of a world that has been sanctified by deep devotion to the divine. I can promise you that you will also enter into that fervent, deep, sacred Tibetan world through going to the festival at Hemis that takes place every year and which I first saw 40 years ago. It's very difficult to describe how funny, how charming, how wild, how sacred that festival is, but it is a festival in which all of the forces within us are orchestrated in a series of dances that reflect back to us both who we are and the work that we need to do to reconcile the dark and the light, the wild and the calm, the transcendent and the imminent within us and participating with the whole of Ladakh presided over by the new reincarnation of Tuxay Rinpoche, who's become a beloved friend of mine and by Drukchen Rinpoche, whom I met when he was the young pupil of Tuxay Rinpoche. Now he's older and they've changed roles. It's all very wild. 
participating in that festival with them presiding and with us there will be so healing and wonderful in ways that I know all of you will experience. The third thing that I promise you is that you will be shown the great artistic treasures of Ladakh. Ladakh wasn't simply a place, isn't simply a place where Tibetan Buddhism lives still, despite everything in its original pristine form. It's also a place where great sacred artists have created amazing Buddhas, the wonderful frescoes of the monastery of Alchi. And being in the presence of great sacred art that has been very meticulously and humbly fashioned to give the deepest possible opening to those who contemplate such art is, I found, and I deeply believe you will find, a very, very transforming experience. And the fourth thing I promise you is that at 70, now I'm 70, I will share with you what Tibetan Buddhism has formed in me. I will share with you three things. I will share with you the great sacred text of Tibetan Buddhism, Shantideva's The Mind of the Bodhisattva, in which the great 19th, 9th century Tibetan mystic takes us through the different kinds of training that all of us need to so align with unconditional compassion that our lives, our whole lives, become an expression of humble service to the spread of that compassion. It's probably the greatest text in Tibetan Buddhism, very holy, very beautiful, very challenging, very noble. And I've spent 40 years meditating on it, and I will share you in a with you in a distilled way what that text means for people, I believe, on all paths. Because the vision of the Bodhisattva is with the vision of Christ consciousness, perhaps the two interlinked noblest visions of who we can be in this troubled, devastating world that we've ever been given. I will also share with you the teachings that I myself receive from great Tibetan masters, including the Dalai Lama, around the whole phenomenon of dying. I co-wrote the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying for Sogya Rinpoche, asked to by the Dalai Lama. And I was lucky enough, blessed enough, to spend time with some of the very greatest of the Tibetan teachers who shared with me and with us, myself and Patrick Gaffney, who is my wonderful companion on this adventure with Sogya, I sh shared with us, they shared with us their own experience in many incarnations of passing through death. And out of this came the book, Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, which sold millions of copies and transmitted the essence of Tibetan wisdom to all seekers on all paths. And the third thing that I will share with you and hope to do with you in the most magnificent settings, both in the monasteries and outside with all the mountains around us and the glory of Ladakh unfolded before us, are the essential Tibetan Buddhist practices that have been transmitted to me and that I will humbly and knowing my own limitations, share with you whatever path you are on to give you absolutely amazing, profoundly tested tools to help you live the most divine human life that you could possibly live. So my friends, I hope that if you're thinking about coming on this trip, and I beg you to really contemplate what could happen to you in such a radiant exposure to truth that it's in one of its highest expressions, in a place that is so astoundingly beautiful. I beg you to perhaps read my book, Journey in Ladakh, to perfume your 
whole being with the special, strange magnificence of this holy land. And I beg you in the middle of your very hurried and busy lives and in the middle of all the stress that the world is going through to consider giving yourself a truly sublime present, a time to expand, a time to breathe in the mountains of truth, a time to practice holy practices that have been tested over many centuries in the laboratories of awakening that were the Tibetan monasteries, and to listen to the teachings that have been given to me to give to you in such a way that whatever path you are on, you can be more deeply inspired to take that path with the whole of what you are. So please, please come with me. I will do my absolute best to give to you the diamond that I was given whose light has irradiated my whole life and continues to inspire and humble me. Thank you so much. <laughs>